Let's look at RNA synthesis in prokaryotes closely. We've seen that genes encoding several proteins of related function are often organized into DNA operons in bacterial cells. Operons are transcribed as a single unit, generating an RNA transcript with several protein coding regions in a single messenger RNA. In bacteria, there's a single RNA polymerase enzyme to catalyze the synthesis of all kinds of RNA made in the cell. Promoters, to remind you, are DNA sequences that mark the start of a gene by attracting and binding the RNA polymerase, as well as other proteins required to start transcription. The structure and sequence of promoters has been worked out in bacteria thanks to old-fashioned and genetic cloning techniques. On the double helix you see in blue here, imagine a protein coding gene to the right of this slide. The double helix is seen as having unwound at the promoter shown in red. The promoter consists of a pair of short DNA sequences called the minus 35 sequence and the Pribno box, named after the fellow who characterized its function. To be a promoter, these two sequences must be separated by a precise number of nucleotides. But the exact sequence of DNA between the Pribno box and the minus 35 element is not important. The sigma factor, illustrated as a red oval attached to RNA polymerase here, is required for the polymerase to recognize and bind to the promoter. Once transcription starts, and after the polymerase has moved a short distance along the template, the sigma factor dissociates from the RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase will then continue to elongate a transcript without the help of sigma factor. We'll be looking in some detail at how cells regulate which genes are turned on and off, and how they turn them on and off. Here it's interesting to note one of these ways. Bacteria have evolved different promoter sequences, some of which are shown here along with different sigma factors so that genes can be selectively activated or silenced depending on which sigma factors are available. Here we take a closer look at transcription elongation. The RNA polymerase has moved away from the promoter and a length of RNA in green has been synthesized. The RNA polymerase, very much on its own now, continues to elongate the transcript. As the polymerase progresses, the DNA strands reform a double helix behind the unwound region of DNA being actively transcribed. The promoter is hinted here in red off to the left where transcription began. Termination of transcription is in response to a signal in the DNA that marks the end of a gene. In this example, the signal is itself transcribed, but we know that the transcript forms this so-called hairpin loop near its three prime end. The hairpin loop destabilizes the association of the transcript with the polymerase and the DNA strand, and they come apart.